packed with flavor. We got fresh ingredients, pineapple pork, al pastor style tacos with homemade corn tortillas. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today we just went out on the limb, right? We just got out of our comfort zone. We just made something absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to show you. All right, before we get started, I just want to kind of like note some important things about this recipe. Don't forget this recipe will be on the flattopking.com. First thing I think we should know is it's ironic that we're making pork al pastor on the griddle when it's 25 degrees outside. You can see your breath. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. Uh, anyways, we're gonna get through this. All right, some things of note. I know if you guys have followed me for a long time, sometimes I try to make stuff easy for people to find. This one was a little bit step up. Now you're gonna have to get out of your comfort zone. But these are important ingredients that I found through my recipe search seem to be like the common ingredient. So let's go over what we have and I'll show you my downfalls. Uh, vinegar, uh, apple cider vinegar and water, uh, chilies and adobo, um, bay leaf salt, black pepper, um, allspice, coriander, and cumin, pineapple juice from a can. It seemed like that was very important. Plus we also have orange juice. We have chicken stock, we have oregano, uh, crushed garlic, and onion. Now these peppers right here were easier to find. Let me show you the packages. These were at my local grocery store. Guajillo. Yep, these on the other hand are these right here and I could not find them at my grocery stores. Also, something I couldn't find was this. Now, this is an Cheeto. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me I'm butchering it. I know I am. I apologize. But I do know one thing. It seemed like this is the key ingredient to the dish, and I did not want to do the dish without it. But luckily for good old Amazon, it was here in two days. So, I will have the links to this and this because that's the only two things I could not find in my links below. You guys can check them out. Get out of your comfort zone. Try something different. That's what we did. Okay? Very easy once you get everything mise en place everything put together it's actually an easy dish first things first we're going to saute the onion to get some char and kind of like uh, roast off the garlic okay just to try to create more surface area in a pot a little bit of oil and then just leave those alone we're going to add the garlic just a little bit later because we don't want our garlic to burn while that's going on, let me show you, because I don't know if we've ever done it on this channel. It's extremely easy, so don't fret. You got your peppers, they're dry, okay? Hard as a rock, probably because it's 25 degrees outside. Take your snips, cut them off. I like to just go right through the pepper. You're gonna blend it up anyways. You open it up, and just take the seeds out. Very, very easy. And that is what I've done to all of these peppers to prep. See how we got some nice color on the onion? You getting that? And the garlic goes, same thing. Just gonna release that flavor. I've crushed the garlic ahead of time just to help out. You get little nooks and crannies, stuff like that. Be careful with your temp. All right, once our vegetables and garlic's browned up nicely, just add some peppers, all those. Start getting those warmed up. We're out our bay leaf. Same thing with the peppers, just kind of get those uh, skins on them that's a little bit loose, release some of that flavor. Man, you smell that right mm. away with the bay leaf and those peppers, wow. I mean, this is gonna be flavor that you just can't get out of a store-bought sauce. No, and I want to relate to the viewers, you know, like obviously this is my first time making it, but I did take the recipe serious. Um, I really try to dive deep into the culture and see like, you know, what's basically, you know, not necessarily traditional, but one easy to find and two, you know, like traditional, you know, I don't want to disrespect it. I want it to be great. And so it did seem like there were certain ingredients that stood out more than others. And I think that's why I went above and beyond because ultimately I want to have great product too. All right. Doesn't take long. Basically, it's the dump method. All right, we're gonna add all those ingredients to the pot, allow it to come up, kind of simmer, and then we're just gonna put a lid on it once it comes up to a boil and let it simmer for like 10 minutes, maybe, you know, something like that. You're just basically looking to rehydrate those peppers. Everything is actually gonna be blended and we will show you that process. While our peppers are hydrating back up and all that liquid, we're gonna take the time to go ahead and prep our pork. Now this is a boneless, I repeat, this is a boneless pork butt um, that's been in the freezer for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Just to harden it up a little bit, this makes it easier to cut. 
Seems like we got a lot of excess fat on top. I might trim some of that off really quick. Where's this fat when I need it when I smoke one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saving that for something. I don't know what I'm saving it for, but I'm saving it. That's pretty good. All right. The whole idea, <laughs> there's your bone. So much for boneless. If you get one with a bone in it, it's not a big deal. You're just going to have to do a little bit more prep work. I try to pick the one out. Oh, right there is small. I'm going to say I try to pick the one out of the crowd that said boneless, but no big deal. So the idea is switching up gears. I know traditionally this would go on one of those sticks with a rotisserie. I know there's other words for it. That gives you the idea. We're doing a griddle theme. So to me, I think that we need to cut this pork in smaller chunks. So I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I'm just going to show you really quickly. Okay. So we're going to go about yay thick, maybe about a quarter, something like that thick. And then from there, I'm just going to kind of dice it around. If you find hard or just 100% fat pieces, um, you can take those out if you want to. Because there is a ton of fat in here. Like that right there, I'll just go and throw out. I'll keep some of it in just because I like it. But ultimately, a lot of it's going to come out. I'm going to get the rest of this knocked out and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, our pork has been uh, cubed, our sauce has been uh, stewed and then cooled down a little bit. Probably could use a hair more, but I think we'll be fine. A hair more cooling down. Yep. But just the smell and the flavor is absolutely fantastic. This is why you just go sometimes the extra mile. I'm not saying you do it all the time. I'm just saying sometimes it does seem like it's worth it. In a blender it goes until it's pureed. Sauce is blended. We are going to use a strainer and just pour it right in. <sighs> <laughs> need one for my neck. Yeah. Is it still on me? <laughs> I missed everything. Yeah. <laughs> need a higher apron. Now, typically this takes for a long marinade, okay? Since it's my first time doing it like this, I'm not exactly sure. As you can see, there's a lot of marinade. I just guessed in the recipe. Uh, so it could definitely take more pork than what we put in it. I could say that you could almost double the pork recipe or double the pork for this amount of liquid. Especially if you're gonna go through all the trouble to, cause this is a lot of steps. You wanna have extra pork for yep. leftovers. Yep, 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 yep. So like I said, so this is actually diced up typically four to eight hours cause you've got those uh, patties of uh, pork and then you stack them and then you trim them and then you put your pineapple on top and then you put them on a rotisserie vertical and then it kind of you know cooks it from the outside in and then you shave it off that's the idea since we're doing 100 percent griddle theme i'm gonna shoot for about three hours i think it's gonna have enough i think it's small enough to where it could really get in there and um flavor up our pork so three hours in the refrigerator we have some vegetables to prepare okay traditionally obviously the pineapple a whole fresh pineapple is key because that's the bottom and the top Obviously, when they carve it, they can cover a little pineapple off, and that's how you end up getting the pineapple into your tacos. I'm going to stay true to that theme. Remember, we're using the griddle, so I'm going to use fresh pineapple. If you're doing this recipe, I don't see any reason why you couldn't just use the chunk pineapple out of the can since you used the juice from it. You could just strain that. You could chop it up, or you could just leave it like that, and that could be your pineapple for the recipe. I'm going to use fresh since that's more of the traditional style. And as so many of you have reached out after we did our homemade flour tortillas with other different recipes that we made along the way, you guys have said, make your own corn tortillas since we like them so well. Here we are. All right, we have two cups of masa, pinch of salt, and then we have hot water. A little bit more than what I'm supposed to have just in case you need to add it. So let me get that uh, salt mix in. <laughs> mix it with your finger. Hey, this is a finger dish. So how much water was that? Technically, it's supposed to be two and a, I mean, one and a quarter. But um, the instructions say it on the package. But more importantly, um, if you have to add water, you need to add like a teaspoon at a time. And you're supposed to come out, like create like a wet dough, like a wet Play-Doh. Not wet, I shouldn't say that, but it is supposed to have 
some moisture to it. Being so cold outside, we're gonna have to let this rest inside, I'm sure. So I'm just folding all these ingredients in. I'm gonna work it for about five minutes. All right, I like where we're at with the dough. It feels good. Remind you of Play-Doh in the bowl. We're gonna add just a little bit of that liquid for moisture so it doesn't dry out. And then we'll let this rest for about 20 minutes. Inside, inside. Yes. It's 25 degrees outside. We'll have rock hard balls. 20 minutes later. Pretty simple. Equal balls. I'm not gonna make a fuss about trying to get them perfectly even. I'm trying to get about 16 balls out of it. So obviously let's just do the math, right? Cut it in half, that's eight. Cut it in half, that's four. Cut it in half, that's two. Cut that in half, just like that. I found that, um, I did them for the first time yesterday. I thought it came out fantastic. Fantastic. I wanted want to do it before we got on video. Uh, but I did find that when you're using a griddle and you're by yourself, um, I found that rolling in a ball is first. Um, actually, kind of was on rhythm. Um, I'll, I'll show you why, because by the time you press it, I can only really grill one at a time. I'm sure if they're all pressed, I could grill multiple, but they don't take long. So we got our halo heating up right now. Trying to hit that 450, maybe 475, even 500 mark. Ta-da! My first ever tortilla press. We'll have a link in the description below. Um, after rolling them out, you guys said, listen, you got to get a press. Once you get a press, everything else is so much easier. Amen to each and every one of you that said get a press. I got the press. I ended up actually getting the bigger one because I think we are going to use it more often than not. Um, there's a small one and a big one, so I opted for the bigger one. So here we go. Uh, very simple. I have a Ziploc bag. I've opened it up. I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm not the world's greatest tortilla maker, but I can tell you don't center it. Offset a little bit from your crunch spot. So this is where you're going to pull it. So just a little bit over, okay? This is the strongest part of the thing. And I feel like the tortillas got thin on this side yesterday, so we're just gonna offset it a little bit. Fold it back over, uh, press it down just a hair. This little guy, this little guy. And wouldn't you know it, no flour, no rolling pin, no muss, no fuss. Ta-da! Anybody can do it, I'm telling you. Three ingredients. The next hard thing is just basically the transition, just be careful. It will rip sometimes. You can obviously re-roll it. We're looking at about 30 seconds for the first side. We had a viewer send us one of these uh, tortilla hot pockets. Once they're done, you can put them in there. I know there's, oh, oh, right there. Once they're done, you throw your tortillas in there. Ooh. So I'm gonna break that out today. It is handy. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Doesn't take long. No oils are down. 30 seconds to the next side. While your tortilla is cooking, this is what I found. I can make one while the other one's cooking and then I can get into a rhythm. This one flips over one more time. It's supposed to get puffy. You guys can see we get a little puffy right there. And there you go. There is your homemade corn tortilla and little pouch it goes ah. and we're gonna continue to build them all dang my lord's hard <laughs> <laughs> holy smokes it is frozen all right our tortillas are snug as a bug in the rug and their little pouch they're all done i got my griddle pretty hot today cruise about 475 to about 500 the reason is there is a ton of moisture we're gonna zap a lot of that away really quickly. So I preach landing zones. I'm not gonna go through each landing zone for each little piece because a lot of pieces. I think the way to do this on the griddle, I could be wrong, is to really develop a char on one side that's gonna mimic the idea of like getting roasted on the outside. So we are gonna let it cook pretty well on the first side to avoid all that steaming of the pork we need to drain it some, okay? You can see we're smoking really well. So this is the idea. I've got myself a little spotter. You can use a holy spoon, something like that. Give yourself a good dab.
All right, so what you're looking for is color. Once you start developing that deep, dark color like that, that mimics the rotisserie style. We're gonna throw that pineapple on, just to represent that spit. It gets warm, it softens up the pineapple. Pineapple just got a little color on there. That's what we're looking for. No water, no sugar, no, no nothing, no butter. Just letting it do its thing in its natural juices. And then you can see here, we have picked up fantastic, and I mean fantastic color and flavor. Just move it to the side, let those fats render out of the pork. Start caramelizing in that sauce. And I think we've, I think we've nailed it. It is super good. Yeah. <laughs> it is super good. So I'm gonna turn the griddle off and then we're gonna serve it right off the griddle. Ooh, nice and warm tortillas. All right, the deal with this is typically it's served like a green style salsa, something like that. What I did not want to do is try to create a recipe and overpower it or something else. So I'm just trying to keep to the traditional side. So we do have the radish. I did cook the pineapple. We have white onion and then we have cilantro. So that's what we're staying with, keeping it basic and really, really, really trying to dial down the flavors for this pork. Look at all that color. Mm. I think you might actually get more flavor, more um, yeah, from caramelization. The yeah. Versus the traditional. Yeah. Some fresh white onion and then some fresh chopped cilantro. And there we go. Obviously, you know me, I've had one off camera. Holy smokes. The pineapple, I'm telling you before I even bite into it, is the key. I, before I even want to take a bite, is just going to add a little bit more. That's probably uh, untraditional. But let me tell you something. The corn tortillas came out perfect. They're pliable. They're soft. They're tender. They have flavor. The pork's great, but that pineapple, the little bits of pineapple. No, mm. Give me another bite. Give me another bite. What other meat could we use for that pair, for that marinade? <laughs> I just want to marinate everything in it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you can do chicken the same way. Ooh. Here, take that bite right there. Mm. So I don't think it's worth it. I mean, in my opinion, I don't think, I mean, if you've already got the can of pineapple, because that's what you want the juice from, you don't want like regular pineapple juice. I just think you just add that pineapple. I think you cut it smaller. Once the pork, had come off the griddle on the thin uh, thin side and we combined it together, that's when I would add the pineapple. I think it would actually flavor the pork very well. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Maybe that's my gringo side. But I think this is phenomenal. These are great little hand tacos, mm -hmm. street style tacos. Restaurant quality food on your back porch. Mm -hmm. After tasting it and experiencing it, for the like, I wouldn't say it's my first time, but especially like this, I do understand where that green salsa would have came from. The brightness of it, the acidity cuts with the pork, adds a little heat on the back end. I could definitely say it's probably missing something on that aspect, but I wanted it clean. I wanted to be able to taste all the flavors and that's what we accomplished today. So whatever you add after you add the pork, that's up to you guys. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below to membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. You can check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook as we're talking about griddles, smokers, Great food like this comes up all the time, and I'm telling you, I get my inspiration from you guys, so thank you so much for sharing what you guys are making. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Mm. Stepping out on a limb today. Golly, that pork is good.